so on. And the holidays represent, at least within the American culture, an opportunity to reflect on those things that are important to you, are important to us, and those things that we should be grateful for. Gratitude is something that, as we know, is a part of our own virtuous moral standing, something that we as a tradition hold to be of virtue and a pursuit of, great, of gratitude is one that each and every one of us in our own capacities tries to be grateful and tries to display a sense of gratitude for the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Remember me and I shall remember you. Reflect on me or be mindful of me and I shall be mindful and remember you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ and show gratitude, be among the grateful, be among those who show gratitude and do not be an ingrate, do not be one who shows ingratitude. Now what's interesting here as those who reflect on the very language itself, وَاشْكُرُولِ وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ to show shukr, gratitude, thankfulness. And then Allah juxtaposes that with kufr or kafr. Right? Washkuruli wala takfurun. Because the word for kufr or the word kufr, although we oftentimes understand it to mean disbelief, and a kafir is one who is a disbeliever, the word kufr itself etymologically or literally is rooted in this idea of ingratitude, of being an ingrate. And that is the nature of disbelief itself, is that by being or by disobeying or disbelieving in Allah, that that is the height of one's ingratitude because then one is ungrateful for the blessings of Allah in his or her own life by displaying that level of ingratitude and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala juxtaposes shukr right gratitude with the very notion of disbelief itself and that again places upon us a sort of heightened sense of the importance of what gratitude or what being grateful is really about. It's about being grateful for all of the blessings that Allah has given us. And although at times we feel that we have challenges in our lives or we have tribulation or trials that those can be trying or taxing on us but that to always show or to always be mindful of the fact that although we may have trials and tribulations the overarching blessings in our lives are such that we should be or we should uh, we should try to be grateful for the things that Allah has given us, that Allah has not tried us with. Those things in parts of our lives where we don't have that sense of tribulation or trial. And there are many. And this is an exercise on an individual level. Your challenges, your blessings are unique to you. And you have the challenge of finding those things in your life 
that you should be grateful of, grateful for, regardless of the trials and tribulations or afflictions that may be a part of life. And that is truly what it is. It's a part of life. We're not guaranteed a free pass from any sense of struggle or test or trials or affliction. That's the nature of this life. The nature of this life is that it is a life of challenges. But to always be mindful of those things that we should be grateful for. And again, that is an inventory, that is a reflection that each and every one of us must take upon his or her own self. And so we can spend the entire portion of the khutbah discussing the virtues of gratitude or perhaps delineate or expand on or list those things in our lives that we should be grateful for. But I think that that would be not only a bit self-indulgent, it would also remove the individual responsibility that we all have, that we all have to find those things in our own lives that we should be grateful for. And so that is a responsibility that you should leave today with, a reflect, with, with an idea or with a challenge that, I, that, 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 that is before you to find those things in your life that you should be grateful for. I know an exercise in therapy that is often recommended is to keep a gratitude journal or a journal of those things that you on a day-to-day -day basis list as those things that you're grateful for. It's an exercise in therapy. Because again, if you reflect or if you pause or spend a moments of your day reflecting on those things, you'll be surprised as to how many things that you can list even on paper, those things that you should be grateful for. But what is more of interest to me is what well, we know on the one hand, the virtues and the blessings of shukr, of showing gratitude, no less than in almost 20 places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of various blessings and says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you may be of those who show gratitude. Again and again, Allah is reminding us of those things or attempting to, uh, attempting to remind us of those things that we should be grateful for. But what is of more interest to me, brothers and sisters, is why is it then, although we know the blessings of showing gratitude, of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why is it then that we oftentimes find ourselves in a condition or in a place in our lives where we display a sense of ingratitude or being ungrateful? or not thankful for the blessings that Allah has given us. And so I want to reflect on a few of those things, those pitfalls or challenges that I think each and every one of us faces with regards to why sometimes our overwhelming emotion or our overwhelming sense is to be despondent, is to despair, of Allah's, of, of, of Allah's blessings and to display a sense of gratefulness and shukr and gratitude. The first of these brothers and sisters is what I like to define as utopianism. Utopianism or the idea of a utopia is perfection in this world. And you literally have ideologies that have attempted to exist in a perfect world or attempted to create a perfect social structure, oftentimes by social engineering and, and so on, to create this quote-unquote utopia, a perfect world. 
a perfect society. And that, brothers and sisters, we know or should know is a fool's errand. Because the nature of this world, as I said earlier, brothers and sisters, is that this world will always be less than perfect. That's the nature of Hayat al-Dunya. That's the nature of the life of this world. In fact, the life of the Akhirah, the life of the hereafter, is predicated on the idea, on the premise, that this life will always be a life of imperfections that this life will always be less than perfect and that true perfection that true perfection will only be achieved in the life of the hereafter that the hereafter is where for instance true justice will be manifest that's not to say that we shouldn't pursue justice in this world or in this life we certainly should, and the Qur'an uh, commends, uh, uh, commands us to do so, to establish justice, even if it, if it means witnessing against ourselves, that the pursuit of justice itself is not a fool's errand. But nonetheless, the idea is that true justice will only be achieved in the life hereafter. That the Akhirah is the abode where all, all wrongs will be made right. That all injustices will be, that will, be, will, will be corrected. That all injustices will be set right. That even an animal that has a grievance against another animal will find its justice on the, in, in the life hereafter, in the Akhirah. That the Akhirah is the abode of perfection. That the Akhirah is the, is the abode of ideals. And this world is the abode of realities, not of ideals. Certainly we can attempt to pursue our ideals, but we may and we often will fall short of those ideals. And that's the nature of this world. And so the reason I talk about this is because the pursuit of perfection, the pursuit of that perfect model or ideal that we have in our minds of whatever it is, whether it's an ideal family life, domestic life, an ideal spouse, an ideal family, an ideal children, idyllic picture of what your domestic life should look like, that that, per, that that idea or notion of perfection is something that we often allow ourselves to uh, delude us into thinking that we don't have things to be grateful for. That if my wife or if my spouse or if my children or if my family or if my community isn't at the ideal standard that I have created in my mind that somehow my family or my spouse or my community or society has, dis has, has disappointed me and I am, then in great I am then ungrateful for what I have because it's not perfect it's not ideal it's not what I've imagined to be the perfect wife the perfect spouse right? And oftentimes our confrontations are because our wives or our children or our community members or our family members don't live up to notions of ideals or, 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 or of perfection, notions of perfection that we have created in our own minds thinking that we will achieve that or that we will attain that in this world. And so the pursuit of that idealism or perfection while on some level is commendable because we should always try to be better but that pursuit of trying to be better is not a license to impose that on others it does not give you the license to impose that on your wife or on your husband or on your children or on your community but rather it is a 
a, a introspective exercise that I want to make myself better. And how do I do that? It's an exercise that should be an opportunity to turn inward rather than to express our sense of despair or despondency at the outside, at those things, those things around us. Challenges at work. My work isn't ideal. I don't have the perfect job or I'm not performing at the perfect level, the optimum level. It's that pursuit that often leads to a sense of despair, to a sense of despair in Allah's mercy, in Allah's blessings, and a sense of ingratitude, yes. And so utopianism, the idea that somehow perfection or our notions of ideals, idealism will be manifested in our lives often leads to a sense of ingratitude. And to further exacerbate this challenge we have in our lives is that we're inundated with images, with depictions of perfection, right? That's what entertainment is all about. That's what television constantly bombards us with. Advertisements constantly bombard us with images of perfection, right? Social media is notorious for this sense of, well, someone has what you don't have. Or someone out there, either on your Instagram or Facebook or social media, is living your perfect life. And that no matter what you do, you can never live a life that they have. Not understanding that oftentimes those images, whether it's produced as such by entertainment industries or advertisement in industries, are created in a way to make you feel, to instill in you a sense of despair, a sense that you don't have it until you buy something, until you acquire something. It's this idea that somehow salvation or redemption or true happiness lies in what? Acquisition. If I just buy the latest Tesla, right? If I just get the latest model of something, the latest iPhone, that somehow I'm going to be happy, right? That's what, that's what these images that we're constantly bombarded with, right? Television. You watch your favorite sitcom or television show, right? Oftentimes, I mean, at least this was certainly the case. Now it's kind of flipped a little, but certainly it was the case where it's the perfect family, right? Perfect husband, perfect wife, children, happiness, and so on. Why, why does my family not look like that, right? Why doesn't my father treat me the way, I'm going to say the Cosby show, but, you know, that's because I grew up in the 80s. Bill Cosby, let's put that aside for a moment. Family ties, whatever it was that you grew up watching, right? I'm a product of the 80s, so I can't help but having dated references. But why is it that my father doesn't talk to me that way? Why don't I get along with my siblings the way, uh, you know, some character on a television show does? It's these images of perfection that we're often bombarded with that create in us a sense of inadequacy. A sense that I don't have enough to be grateful for. So this idea of utopianism is something that we have to overcome. And to conclude, on a related note, is what I was sort of already kind of alluding to, is this idea of keeping up with the Joneses, right? That your neighbor has a better car than you have, a better house than you have, that person that you follow on social media somehow gets to travel all over the world. Why can't I do that, right? I have a job and bills and I, I'm inundated with debt. Why is it that I can't live a carefree, debt-free life like the person that I happen to follow on social media? That sense of keeping up with the other, right? And again and again, this is something that the Quran talks about. Al-Hakum takathur right? This, just wanting to accumulate wealth, accumulate the trappings of this world, because somehow that'll fill that void, that'll fill that sense 
of despondency or inadequacy that you feel in your life, that somehow you will attain happiness or gratitude or quote-unquote perfection if you just get what your neighbor has or what your brother and sister has. This idea of takathur and to constantly be one, to constantly be uh, competing with one another in the acquisition of goodies and toys and, and material assets, that somehow that is how you attain happiness. And that again, brothers and sisters, is a fool's errand. And so this is why what I said at the outset remains true. And the challenge that we have, not only in this season, but in every day of our lives, is to count and to enumerate the blessings that we have in our lives, the opportunities that we have in our lives, the, 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 the things that we have in our life that we should be grateful for. And I believe, and, and count, and, I, and, and believe you me, if we were to uh, even attempt the exercise of listing those things that we should be grateful for, then that is something that will allow us to be more grateful to the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in each and every one of our lives. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that ability gives us that ability to always turn to Him in a sense of deep gratitude for the countless blessings that Allah has given us. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلنا به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ظنوبكم ومن يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطعنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما همزقوا على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لطاخة لنا بوعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سقدك والنار سبحان ربك رب العزة يا ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله